Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in. In this episode, we will cover business central workflow, possibly an underused function in both business central and nav. If you've ever needed a quick field validation against an order, you don't need a developer to accomplish this. Workflow is not just for approval. So stick around and I will show you how to use workflow in business central or nav without the need of a developer. All right, everyone. So the first thing you want to do is identify your requirements. So I'm going to give you an example of a scenario that from time to time I get asked all the time, could you build an extension or customize where it validates certain fields for me? And so typically you create a design document, put an estimate and then develop around that, right? Uh, from a developer standpoint, it's, you know, you may subscribe to uh, on post or on release uh, and then do a validate against that field. Well, you no longer really or not, don't really need a developer to do that. Workflow can actually accommodate some of those simple requirements. So in this ex example, if we take a look at the purchase order, let's say someone creates a purchase order and you want to make sure that the sales price is not submitted with zero dollars or maybe a dollar or maybe a certain dollar amount. You can also specify the items and so forth, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of showcase how you can use uh, the workflow to check uh, those parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new purchase order, uh, something really quick here. And I'm going to give some random number. And let's say I'm going to take a look at, um, uh, take a look at or uh, adding this uh, item, right? Uh, it could be a non inventory item as well. So that that's a possibility if you're ordering maybe office supplies or whatnot. So from this purchase order, I added an item, let's say I need a chair for the office, I just need one. And you see that the unit price is brought in here, you know, based on certain scenarios. For example, if you have a vendor price, maybe a sales price or a purchase price. So you come in at $192.80. So if the price is correct, typically you release an order and it gets released and, you know, it gets submitted. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, someone made an adjustment. It's $10, right? It's going to allow them to release this order. Now you could potentially create a workflow and get an approval, but sometimes an approval is not necessary. You may just want to do a quick validation that no one's entering, you know, a, a unit price on a particular item or just in general that are different or too low of a unit price. Uh, one of the common things that I've been asked before is that, you know, someone being able to have $0 in unit price, and then they can go ahead and release an order. Right. Again, in the past, you may have a developer, you know, create a um, an extension or a customization that's preventing prevents anyone from entering zero uh, when you're releasing the order. So you actually don't need a developer to do that. You can use workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and just reopen this very quick here. I'm going to leave that and use that as my uh, test for that purchase order. So. What I'm going to do is go through the workflow and how you can use workflow to accomplish this. Maybe you just need a pop up and it prevent uh, prevent it from being released. So if I go take a look at workflow, I have templates and I have categories and workflows. So there are two ways to approach this. You can create a new one from scratch or new workflow from a template. Now, when you create a new workflow from a template, these are typically sort of an approval uh, uh, process, right? So a lot of these are approval, um, approval, 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 invoice workflow, uh, you know, purchase order approval workflow. But you may not need that. You, again, my requirement is just say, hey, please don't put zero dollars in unit price on a purchase line. So what I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just create a brand new one. So I'm going to go ahead and click new. And I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to give it a name. Let's say PO check lines. You can give it whatever name you want. Okay. And this workflow 
I'm going to give a little bit of a description. Workflow checks if any of the purchase line have a unit price of dollar sign. <laughs> dollar unit price of unit price of zero zero dollars okay that's the that's the goal here i can also set uh, a category in this case i'm going to use the purchase document uh, because i'm using this as a purchase order and at this point in time i got my header and now i'm going to build my step so you create an event when does this kick off so i can go ahead and click this three dots here and here are my option, right? When a purchase document is released, a sales document is released, the general line. So in this case, when a purchase document is released, I just needed to check if if any of the lines have unit price of zero at the time of release. Because you may create a sales order, you may not release it yet. And of course, date, you know, missing data. You don't want that to stop them and annoy them only when you release the purchase order. So I'm gonna use that event when a purchase document is released. In here, I have two, two areas that I need to populate. In what, in what condition? That means your parameters or filters for this workflow to kick in and how you want it to respond. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my conditions first. So you can, again, add any specifications you want from a header uh, perspective and or the purchase line. So for my requirements, I just needed to check on the purchase line. So I can go ahead and skip all of this, but you know, whatever your requirements, you can add uh, additional things in there as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my purchase line. So I have my type, maybe I only want it to occur on items. Uh, it could be any item that I want. It could be any, you know, maybe quantity can't be zero, but you may have a purchase line with zero quantity. So I'm going to leave that alone. What I'm going to do is focus on the unit price. So I'm going to go ahead and look for unit price. Okay. I'm going to use this unit price here. So now I have my uh, uh, unit price field. I can say zero and that's the requirement. So that's my condition. My condition means that uh, when a purchase document is released and that the type is item, and if any of the purchase line have unit price of zero, it's going to uh, meet this condition. So I'm gonna hit okay here. And again, you can add additional conditions if you want to. Uh, again, this is kind of like a, a no code, low code. In this case, it's like no code. And so I'm gonna hit okay. So that's my condition. Now I'm gonna work on my response. So my response uh, is really based on how you want it to react, right? So whether you want it to uh, put a, um, a restriction to the record. Uh, you can have a message pop up. You can have someone notified, uh, whatever that may be. But in this scenario, in my example, I just want someone or something to notify the person, Hey, you need to make sure that your unit, your unit price is not $0. So I'm going to choose my response here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on show message. Um, or you can create a notification if you want to. In this case, I just want a pop-up. So that is the message here. So I'm gonna click a pop-up here. And that percent, by the way, when you saw that percent, that percent's actually, uh, it's a uh, sort of a, a code variable, uh, uh, a, <laughs> a variable which is what you use in code, you, you, you reference to what the message is gonna be. So in this case, it's going to be my message. I'm going to add a message here and I am going to add, say, uh, uh, you cannot have a unit price, um, of $0 on your purchase line. Please adjust accordingly and try again, <laughs> whatever message you have. I'm also going to add a condition because remember, I am just putting a, my response right now is just going to give you a pop-up message, but it's still going to release it. I, I want it to, uh, prevent the document to be released. So I'm going to add more responses. So I'm going to go ahead and add more response. I also want to, uh, uh, either do nothing or reopen the document. Now, 
If you're going through this with me, you may not have that option for the reopen the document, right? You have to enable that. And that is through the matrix of the workflow combination, workflow response combination. And I'm going to show you that really quick. So in this case, I'm going to go in and just um, reopen the document. Because again, if I don't have this response, my document is still going to be released. And I'm going to go hit OK. That meets my requirement. It's going to meet my condition. If the purchase line that has a type of item has unit price of zero, this is how it's going to respond. It's going to respond a message pop up. It's going to show a message. You can't have, you cannot have a unit price of $0 in your purchase line. Please adjust accordingly and try again. And it's going to reopen that document. It's going to prevent it from being released. So I'm going to hit OK. Just to go back to my comment, the reopen document is typically not available um, based on that response or based on, on this condition or in event, I'm sorry. And so I need to add that functionality. You can do that through the matrix uh, for the workflow. So I'm going to search for a workflow. Okay, I'm going to show all. And here there is a uh, option for you called workflow event response combinations. All right, let's go ahead and dig into this a little bit here. So I'm going to find that event and that event was a purchase document line. So if you take a look at this matrix, you see that some of these things are checked and unchecked by default. You can add uh, uh, additional responses. So what that means is that, you know, if a purchase document is released, I can apply new values right now. That option is not available. It's not checked. And uh, there are other areas too that you can do or you can add uh, you can create an approval, uh, request automation, whatever that may be. But what I'm going to look for is that option I was talking about is reopen the document. So I'm going to click next set here and you will see that, uh, you know, you create notifications here. It's available for most. You can discard new values. You can do nothing, but here are my last one right here. Let me move my face out of, out of this thing. You see the last one here is reopen the document. Now by default, that's not turned on. So you'd have to go through this workflow event response combination and it's just a simple uh, checkbox. So for me, enabling this is going to allow me to use this response against this event. Again, by default, it's not available. So if you're following me, you're not going to see that you have to go ahead and navigate to this page and add that as your available response back out back to my workflow. So my workflow meets my requirement. Let's recap really quick. My requirement is to anytime someone's create a purchase order and they have a purchase line of an item when they release it, I want to make sure that the unit price does not come in a zero. Doesn't be have to be unit price, any field you're looking for uh, in the purchase line, it could be, unit cost if you want, and you can't have unit cost of zero. You can also do that. Uh, uh, and that's the event. The event is when someone released a document and the condition is what I just mentioned and how you want it to respond. In this case, I wanted to show up a message and uh, reopen the document. So once I have that condition met, I can go ahead and turn on or enable this workflow. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and take a look and check. Okay. So we're going to go back to our purchase order. If you recall, um, I was able to release something that had a unit price of zero. So now if I go ahead and try to release this, you're going to see that message pop up. Okay. There's my pop-up message. In this case, uh, it tells me that you cannot have a unit price of $0 on your purchase line. Please adjust accordingly and try again. I'm going to hit okay. You know, let's say it never released my order here. So now I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, record here on my unit price. It's going, it's not going to meet that requirement. It's no longer true. That means I should be able to release this document. So if I go ahead and release and it's now released. So if I go ahead and reopen this one and make adjustment of zero and release going to trigger my workflow as simple as that requires no developer 
um, involvement whatsoever and it's going to meet your requirement. Again, you can expand beyond that. You can have a notification. Uh, maybe a, 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 someone gets notified that someone tried to release a purchase order with zero unit price or direct or unit cost or whatever that may be. So again, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, if you find this very helpful, uh, please share uh, the video. You can uh, like the video if you'd like to, uh, if you want. And I hope you find my posts helpful. You can also visit my uh, website, uh, mattolino.io, unless you're watching this from my website. That's awesome. Uh, but if you're finding this YouTube uh, video uh, directly in YouTube, you can also check out the my blog website via the link below and a reference to the workflow uh, document from Microsoft. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.